What's up guys, Matty here. Today we're gonna go over the five best plugins of 2021. Now these are plugins that might not necessarily be the best, but they are plugins that I'm using in my mixes every day, or at least every other day. Plugins that I've you know picked up over the year that are really helpful and useful to me, and hopefully will be helpful and useful to you. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so the first plugin we're gonna go over is Claro by Sonex. Uh, this plugin is really cool. It has three different sections to it, if you will. It has this pro produce section, which is a really simple EQ, and you can you know cl quickly switch bands and so forth like that. I actually use this section a lot. You know, when I first reviewed this plugin, and, and I'll put the link to the full review here, I was like, yeah, maybe I'll use this, but I actually use this a lot. It's really cool for just you know not looking at any sort of frequency bands, just, dialing in uh sounds and that's what an eq should do but i think you know we use so many plugins that like show you where the bands are that sometimes we're using our, our eyes more than our ears and using it this way really helps to eliminate that so i do use this section a lot once i get the general sound of what i wanted from the eq then you can go into the tweak section and actually you know fine tune things and and, and go in and know how the analyzer and so forth as you can see, um, and then, you know, fine tune and tweak things and maybe find, you know, sometimes looking at the, the frequency uh, analyzer is helpful and you can go in and find things that you might not have been able to find just through ear. Now, the third part and maybe the most useful part for me is the mix section. And so on my mixes now, what I do is I put this at the final stage. So I, on, I, all my, um, on my template, I have drums, music, vocals, and effects. And so I'll put that on all four of them. I don't know why it's not on effects here, but um, I'll put that on all four of them. And then what you can do is hit play and it will show you on this band here where you might have some conflicting frequencies. And that can go, you know, that can help me to maybe check in on some things and see where I might be able to get a little more clarity out of the mix. And that's been really helpful. It works well. I know others do that like Isotope, but this one to me just works better. Um, but let me play for a minute. You can see if we pick up anything on, on, on this song. So you see right here, there's a couple different sections and you know, we could bring that down on the music section. And this is just so you know, this is drum, all music versus all drums and you can switch it. Um, if I had the, if I had a plug on the bass, you could do the bass. So that might show us more of what's going on as the bass is mixing with the music, but you can tuck this down and then take a listen and see if it's giving you any more clarity. So there, just a little bit, it felt like we got a little more clarity. I just stuck in this little part in the music. So this plugin is super helpful for doing things like that. This next plugin is the Howie Weinberg Mastering Console from Acoustica Audio, and I will put the link to the full video review in here. Um, but this thing is really cool, and it's something I've been waiting for a plugin company to do, which was actually sample, sample in, in, in Acoustica's case, or emulate the sound of uh, the converters. And I know some people are like, yeah, whatever, but, but sometimes just going through my converters and on my analog mastering chain gives me a little more like space and width that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And they did this pretty well. Uh, and you can pick a couple different converters and it gives you that sound that I'm always after just sometimes running through my converters. So it was really cool to, to have something like this um, and now I can use it. And, and honestly, with this, I've been doing more in the box mixes and masters where I'm not even using analog at all. And um, it gives me that sound that I'm looking for. So this section here was huge. And then you also have the EQ and compression and filters and clipping and all that other stuff that adds to it. Um, this is kind of how I open it. This is my saved preset for it. And so I'll put the HQ on at the end, but um, I'm using this MyTech into the C2 clipper and then I reversed the limiter going to the analog to digital converter. I got the limiter going there because uh, it sounded like, I felt like I could get a little more a little more out of it when I did it that way. Um, but you can play with it a whole bunch of different ways, but this plug has been huge. Um, I'm hoping once I get to my M1 Mac uh, after Acoustica updates the rest of their stuff, I can put this on all my mixes because what happens is it's such a CPU hog 
that uh, as you know, plugins go, at least in Pro Tools, you know, from vocal chain to mix bus to the master chain, um, it just starts dying and it's really hard for me to use it on full mixes, but um, hoping that will change with the M1. Great plugin though, if you're just doing straight up mastering, this could be maybe the only plugin you need. The next plugin that might be a surprise is Toop by Good Hertz. And I've actually started to really dig all the Good Hertz plugins. I actually bought most of them on the, um, over the holiday to get all of them. I had Toop, but I wanted the other ones and I'm starting to dig into those. They make really cool plugins uh, with different features and you can always expand them and, and get extra stuff here. This Toop I've been using on my straight up mix uh, music bus where a lot of my, my music elements like keyboards come through. And it's usually just pretty much standard, although sometimes I'll increase the tape or tube. Uh, why it's tube, it's a tube and tape emulator together. Um, but just putting it on my music bus gives me a little bit of extra thickness sometimes and, and makes, you know, sometimes these kind of stereo keyboard sounds warm up a bit. And, and I'll just play this, this is just a guitar. I'll play it for you. It's subtle, but to me it makes quite a difference. You can hear it thickens things up a bit. Let me crank it so you can really hear it. And this also works great on bass and, um, and drums if you need it, if you want to warm up your drums a bit. And the presets are cool. I love the way they do presets. They have like historical presets, so like Maybelline or Voodoo Child, and you can get different sounds that way um, just using their presets. So cool plugin, you can also do a, uh, it has a mix knob. So if you're getting like a little too much warmth, you can dial it back. And it also has an opto compressor, which I actually do use sometimes. If some of the music elements are just getting a little too out of control, I'll just compress my music bus. And that can, um, sometimes using this compressor is a nice alternative to some of the others I use. Next is Split EQ by Eventide. One of the cooler plugins to come out this year, something different, which is a uh, welcome, for all of us, no one wants any more emulations. It's nice to have something different and unique that does something that other things don't. And Toop, uh, Toop, sorry, Split EQ definitely does that. Um, you know, you can check out the full review I did and I'll put it in the, in the link above. But basically you can split transients and tonal or transients and sustain, I guess you could say, into different sections with the EQ. And man, you can really EQ out sounds you don't want and get more of something you do want. Um, just using this EQ and, and I'll just show you the guitar really quick so you can hear what it's doing. First, we're going to boost some transients, then I'll duck the transients and you'll see just by using a guitar, sometimes if you have a guitar that's too like clicky, uh, you can pull the transients down or if you want a little more, you know, the guitar to cut more, you can put the transients up and the same with tonal, you can do that vice versa. Uh, but check it out just, you know, using uh, it on the guitar. So as you can hear, I mean, there's just so many ways you could do this. You can change the feel of a whole song with this EQ, you know, make it more of like a funky song like you heard using this EQ setting or more of a warmer laid back song by pulling the transients down. This thing's really great for vocals, um, DSing stuff. So one of the cooler plugins to come out, if not the most innovative, uh, definitely check out Split EQ. Now, the last plugin on the list is by Reverb Foundry, and it is a reverb, and it's called Tai Chi, and I don't like adding more reverbs because we already have too many, but like I said in the review, I'll, I'll put that link as well. This one's just really cool, and you can get so many sounds out of it that I, I had to put it on there. It's, it's one of the cooler reverbs I've had. Having the pre-delay, being able to click the tempo, you know, I go over this in the review, but the EQ is really easy. It has a dynamics processor built in and like one you can really tweak. It's not just threshold. You have ratio, attack, knee, release, all that, which I really like to duck reverbs. It gets them out of the way, but then brings them up, you know, when, when they need to be. 
And the sound of it's really great. I love the chambers on here. I love the uh, vintage, as you can see, the vintage classic halls, the vintage sounds they have, and you can make them yourself. If you want vintage classic sounds, you just go to Fidelity and you, and you bring the bit depth down to the output, or you, know, you can do it just on the reverb. And then you have this multi-band reverb time multiplier where you can affect the frequencies that way. So much you can dial in. But what I like about this is there's so much you can dial in, but you can get to it and change it so quickly. It's not one of those EQs where you have to like dig in to really find the sound, um, to be able to change the sound. It's really quick. Like all these tabs help. And then you can just grab this and bring this down. This has an on for this preset, but... Um, it's just super easy to use. You can dial in the sound you want and it sounds great. So this is kind of my new go-to reverb for halls and stuff like that and chambers. Um, so I had to put it on the list of, you know, the top five plugins that I've been using this year. All right, guys, so those are the top five plugins of the year for me. Let me know what your favorite ones are in the comments below. What have you found super useful on something you're using four months after the purchase date? That's always a good indicator to me. If you need your songs mixed or mastered, hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. You can also find my courses and presets there. Have a good year. Talk to you soon.